All right, good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. A gorgeous morning here in in springtime right in right in Duluth and that's kind of the the beauty about a bite like this is you don't have to travel far you know right here in our in our backyard there's some fantastic springtime fishing and what I kind of like about this time of year is you never know what you're going to catch um, all your fish are kind of mixed in together right you finally get those water temps you know 50 55 where your trout start to move up in the water column you got your salmon there your walleye start to funnel out of the St. Louis River uh, some browns around like you never know what you can catch out here so um, that's what's fun about about this time of year and again it's mainly it, it, it is a trolling bite right out here right out here in Duluth there's no structure so your structure is going to be your water temp and your water clarity so you, you got to troll use planer boards um, you know if you're in Minnesota waters two lines a piece Wisconsin waters three lines a piece and uh, yeah put out some put out some boards and run some stick baits and just troll around and you know wait till you hear that drag sing and uh, you know it, it's gonna be fish on so we're gonna be using kind of this is just stick baits this time of year you know raffles scatter apps are good north and make some awesome baits in the in the rumble bees here um, you know some fantastic colors but mainly stick baits and kind of that smelt like profile um, you know smithwicks can be good but you know yeah, i mean everything everything is good everything's good here so um we got the db customs as well so you know a lot of a lot of good baits to use um i don't think there's one right thing to use is put out a variety and see what happens and troll around so keep changing things up till you find that hot color it changes daily out here and uh yeah hopefully we're gonna see a few fish the graph is loaded with smelt and other other bait fish and maybe some fish so there's life here um yeah let's uh see what today has to bring stick with us it's gonna be a good one Outside board, there we go. That's a fish. I don't know what it's gonna be. I thought maybe a lake trout at first, but we'll see. That's awesome. This straight monofilament line is kind of the, the name of the game this time of year. You know, if you're using lead core and snap weights and downriggers, you know, you may be fishing under the majority of those fish. You know, the top five feet, six feet of the water column generates all the heat, and that's where all the bait fish are, and you know, all your fish are gonna be right up there with them, so. Really wanna focus in on, on that top, you know, 10 feet of the, of the water column. So putting these stick baits back, 100 to 120 feet is gonna get them down there, you know, five, six, seven, eight feet in the water column, so. Probably gonna be a little coho. Feels too light for a for a lake trout. Yeah, that's a salmon. That's a salmon. That's better, even better yet. Keep them down. There we go, baby. That's awesome. Look at that. Yes. That right there is the best tasting fish in fresh water in my mind primarily due to just their diet you know bugs and smelt i think lake superior salmon tastes even better than salmon out of the other great lakes because uh the other great lakes they feast on a lot of alewives which are kind of a fatty bait fish here they're eating smelt you know and just pure bait with no fat so these salmon have no fat on them their meat is just bright red i mean it does not get any better than that and that is a coho salmon we can kind of tell by the white in its mouth a Chinook salmon would have a lot of black in there. So that's a coho, that's a pretty big coho for Lake Superior. I'd say a little bit above average. You know, they vary year to year, but that's a, that's a great sized coho salmon out of Lake Superior. And that's gonna make some of the most delicious table fare that you can experience here in, in fresh water. So we're gonna put him in the live well and uh, get that bait back out there and see if we can't catch another one or two. But even if we don't catch another one, this, oh, there's a fish. <laughs> Long line. <laughs> I think we found them. <laughs> Let's get this in the live well. <laughs> as soon as I said, if we may not, we may not, even if we don't catch another one, this one goes. That hit like a salmon too. And that's what happens a lot of times is these salmon school up, right? This one here is on that Northland rumble stick. And we just had it long lined behind the boat about 120 feet. This one's staying down. 
Oh, we got a little lake trout instead. That's all right. That hit really, really hard. So here we have a, a lake trout, and that's going to be a more a more lean lake trout. So this would have very good meat as well. You can kind of tell a little bit longer nose on him. Um, you know, he's got some thickness back here in the tail, um, kind of silvery, palish in color. Uh, you know, so that I mean that would have good meat on it too. We might put him in the live well. You know, along with the salmon, these these lean lake trout have have very good orange meat meat too. So pretty cool. Let's put him in the live well, get these baits back out there, make a circle and get back through there. There's going to be more fish to be caught. All right, so both those fish, I think we uh, we found a pattern. This is a DB Custom. This is a Northland Rumble Stick number four. Check out those colors. Pretty much identical, right? Like, <laughs> I, I think you're onto something when uh, you get two fish in a couple minutes and it's on the same color. Different baits, same color. So... Um, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool to see. So this North End Rumble Sticks here, you know, a great bait along with the, the DB Customs. You can't go wrong with, with either. So some pretty pretty cool color patterns in both. This one was this long lined behind the boat, 100, 120 feet. That coal came on the outside planer board. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool. But yeah, that's 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 a pattern, I'd say. <laughs> we might have to change a couple, uh, couple other ones up and get more of these colors out. Fish, 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 fish. Heavy one. That's a bigger fish, heavy fish. Sometimes they can get hooked a little weird. You know, we're using stick baits that have multiple hooks on them. So sometimes the fish can, you know, eat that back one, then they turn and get that front one in their mouth as well. So they kind of come in sideways, but it could be a bigger fish too. I don't know, we'll see. You know, early season, you know, every year you're so ambitious to, to get on the water. You know, you get those nice warm days in April and fishing so hit or miss in April. It's, it's just, your lake trout are not shallow yet. The water's cold and your fish are super grouped up. When you hit mid to late May like this, your fish really disperse and the lake just comes alive. You know, it, it, it pays the wait till, you know, mid to late May like this because it, 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 you can experience some very, very, very good fishing. I always say when, when the water is super cold and, and extremely warm, you know, kind of the two opposite ends of the spectrum, your trout are going to be deep. When it's 50, you know, I'd say 48 to 58 degrees, that's your sweet spot where your lake trout are up high in the water column and you can come out here and have, have fantastic days catching trout, catching salmon, kind of everything that this area has to offer. What I love about these gator boards here, they're so easy to take off by yourself. You know, oversized clips. You can just, uh, you know, even if you just have one person like I did there, it's easy to take off. Now it's just, uh, you know, me and that fish and about 100 feet of monofilament line in between. Look at that lake trout. That's a gorgeous laker. Nice lake trout. <laughs> That's a nice lake trout there, man. That same purple again, purple and white. It is that same color. Look at that there. That is a gorgeous lake trout. Yeah, kind of as we guessed in that five, six pound range. Gorgeous lean fish. Cool, really cool dot patterns on it. Kind of thought it was a brown trout at first there with the big round dots, but that is a, that's a nice lake trout. Very cool fish. A little big, we might release this guy. A little big for, you know, what we're after to, to eat today, but put up a fun fight, let me tell you. Such a fun fight. That's cool, they're a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Let's get this one back and catch another one. Fish, big fish. Big fish on the long line. This thing is just not stopped taking drag. I don't know what it's gonna be. It's a heavy fish. It's either gonna be a big salmon or it's a, uh, Maybe a brown trout or, I don't know, even just a ticked lake trout that's got a good leverage, you know, just that bait's position in his head, so he's got good leverage, but I can't tell. And that's what's fun about this time of year is you just, you don't know what could, uh, what can bite. Yeah, it's, it is a trout. Nice lake trout. There we go. 
Look at that, just come off. That's a nice trout. That's a very good looking So this is like an ideal fish to, to eat. This is the kind of the, the brief characteristics of it, a longer nose, kind of silver bluish bluish in color. You know, that's a lean, that's a lean trout. So Cisco, it's kind of what you want to avoid if you're looking for, you know, a really good table fare. Um, you know, they, they can be delicious as well, but you know, today I, I prefer a, a lean for, you know, how we want to eat them. But yeah, that's a great fish. Let's put him in the, him in the live well and catch another one. Outside board. We're making a hard turn there. And that's something to keep in mind too if you're, you know, we're turning to our, our starboard side and this is kind of the, the outside on the port side and that was going the fastest. So, you know, whether that lure just kind of rose up in the water column due to increased speed or that, you know, maybe the fish like that faster speed, just something to keep in mind. You know, there's so many variables out here. You never truly know why a fish bites your bait, but that feels like another lake trout. But that's fun. That's why I like fishing out here this time of year. You know, if your lake trout aren't high yet, you can have some tough days if you can't find those pods of salmon. So your lake trout are kind of your, your saving grace out here a lot of days because they're, I mean, they're not too picky. As long as you get the water temps to get them up in the water column, they're usually not too picky and will bite most days. Whereas those salmon can be so hit or miss. They're super hard to find. It's just kind of more so sheer luck if you, if you run into them. There's one on the long line. That same bait, 90 some feet back, and that feels like a salmon to me. That feels like a good one. Yeah, this is going to be a salmon. I can just tell they're salmon are a lot more kind of aerodynamic in the water and there's not much pressure there when you have one on. So it's coming in fairly easy. The hard part is getting them in the net because once you get them close to the back of the boat, they go wild. That's a big coho. Oh, massive. Heck yes. That's a massive coho. That is what you want to see out here. That is the absolute this prized catch out here in my mind. I mean, especially when they're big like this too, right? They get some thickness in their back and they're, that's probably pushing a 20 inch fish. Like that's a big, big coho salmon for Lake Superior. Our salmon don't get big, but you know, they make up for it in terms of taste and table fare because they're just, there's nothing better. There's honestly nothing better than Lake Superior Coho Salmon. If you haven't tried it, man, you gotta get over here and you know, get, test your luck and try to catch one of these. And you know, fishing's good for these all summer long. You know, as summer progresses here, they migrate up the North Shore, Two Harbor, Silver Bay, Grand Marais can be good. So, you know, it's such a fun fish. And uh, yeah, lucky enough to see two of them now this morning. Let's get that one in the live one. All right, that's uh, you get scales on your hand. That's when you know you have a salmon. But look at what this fish just puked up. And that there is the carcass of a smelt. A main forage base for these, these trout and salmon right now. And you know, as this water warms up to you know upper 50s and low 60s, your smelt kind of disperse and then you get more bugs. But right now it, it's mainly, mainly smelt and there's starting to be a few bugs on the surface. So, and that's cool. And that's why we like to use stick baits this time of year. I feel like they just work so much better than, you know, more of a deep diving crankbait or a shad style bait. You know, just your stick baits in that three and a half to five inch range really mimic the, the size of smelt that are in here this time of year. So yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's, uh, that's fun. Trout, salmon, it's a beautiful day right here in Duluth, Minnesota. Got it? Yep. As the morning progresses here, we're seeing a lot of the, the bait on our sonar kind of drop down the water column. You know, earlier it was a lot of 10 to, 10 to 20 feet 
we were seeing the, the, the marks on our, our Laurents here, but now it's all like 30 to 50, even 60 feet. So as that sun gets a little bit higher, all your bait fish kind of drop down in the water column, you know, rightfully so. It's just, it just gets, gets too bright up there for, you know, for their tolerance. Um, that doesn't mean we're gonna drop our lures. Our fish are still there, right? Like these aren't game fish that, that we're marking. It, it's smelt, it's maybe hairy, and it's bugs, it's debris, it sticks, you know, it's, it's just a, you know, just all kinds of stuff. Your fish are way up high in the water column and when your boat goes over them, you know, they're not just gonna sit there while your boat goes two feet over their back, right? They kind of swim off to the side a little bit and get out of the way of your transducers. So you don't graft those fish. So, you know, although we're seeing a lot of the bait, you know, drop down in the, in the water columns, we're keeping our, our lures up high and uh, still catching quite a few fish. There we go. There we go. Inside board, that's always a, uh, a friendly fish as we call it because you don't have to skip it across other boards and you have zero chance at getting tangled. Awesome. It's not too often you're fishing and the temperature gets colder as the day goes on, but here in Duluth when that east wind picks up, that is surely the case. Scatter up, 111 back. It feels like a salmon. It's feeling, uh, it's coming in pretty easy. But that's good, that's what we want. Coho are the candy of the sea. All right, Busker. Busker just came along to be the net man today. <laughs> this fish is digging, staying down. Barely hooked. <laughs> we got him. Yeah. Barely hooked. Look at that. That's a big, big that fish. Big that's a giant, <laughs> dude. That's a giant. Gorgeous fish. Kind of a brown back on him. That's cool. Wow. That's a chunky coho, man. For the Duluth area, like that's a very, very big, respectable coho. Definitely above average in size, but they just make for, you know, the, the best table fare that you could ever, ever imagine. Such a cool fish. Big, chunky, big Lake Superior cohos. That's fun. All right, I think our time on the water for, uh, for today here is is done but that was a very very fun and productive day it wasn't even a full day you know six seven hours in the in the morning and if i can fish part of a day it would definitely be early morning you know sunrise till 1 2 p.m seems to kind of consistently be be your best time but yeah i mean four or five lake trout three gorgeous coho salmon and that's just typically what you can expect out here you know pretty average i mean i'm sure you can do a, a lot better but you can do a heck of a lot worse as well so I am definitely happy with uh, with that success, and we have some uh, great table fare in the in the live well. I'm excited to get home and uh, cook up some coho salmon, and you know that's truly the the candy of the sea out here on Lake Superior. So, thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.